You don't need to be an expert to start investing and building wealth in the stock market. In fact, there are literally only six ETFs that you will ever need to invest in. I know that sounds too easy, like how can it be that simple? But it is that simple. And by the end of this video, you'll be kicking yourself wondering why you didn't watch this video sooner. In this video, we're gonna go over six different categories of ETFs and the best ETFs that you can invest in within each of these categories. In my opinion, these are the only six ETFs that you'll ever need to invest in to build wealth long term. And we'll start first with number one. Your portfolio needs a core holding, one main central investment that makes up the bulk of your portfolio. Yes, you can have other investments, but your core holding is the main dish, it's the entree, and it typically makes up over 50% of your entire portfolio. And a very common strategy that has been proven to be effective is to hold on to an ETF that tracks the entire market and use that as your core holding. And with that, the best core stock ETF that I believe that you can invest in is VTI or the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. VTI VTI's goal is to track the performance of the crisp US total market index, a stock market index that represents nearly 100% of the US stock market from mega cap stocks all the way to nano cap and everything in between. For the average investor, investing in an ETF like VTI is a one size fits all approach. It provides a low cost and easy way to gain access to all of the returns in the entire US stock market. VTI holds about 4,100 stocks in total with top holdings in some of America's largest companies including Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Amazon, Google, and many others. But VTI doesn't only invest in large cap companies. It's a balanced fund with a robust mix of stocks in the small, mid, and large cap segments of the stock market, ensuring that you'll never miss out on any opportunities presented in any of the market caps. Over the past 10 years, this ETF has returned an average of 12.52% per year. This means if you would have invested $10,000 10 years ago, your investment would have grown to about $32,518, even despite recent volatility. And yes, while past performance is certainly not a guarantee of future results, ask any investor why they're investing in the stock market and they'll tell you it's because deep down inside, they just know that the stock market is always going to go up over the long term. Now let's talk about dividends. So although VTI isn't a dividend focused ETF, it does still have a dividend yield of 1.56% or about $3.04 per share per year in dividends. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into VTI one year ago, you would have been paid about $158 in dividends. And as with any ETF, there will be a fee to invest in this fund, but luckily VTI has a very small one. The expense ratio for VTI is only 0.03%, which means you'll only have to pay $3 per year on $10,000 invested to own this ETF. VTI is one of those ETFs that you just cannot go wrong with, and if you can combine VTI with some of the other ETFs that we'll go over in this list, then consider yourself in the perfect position to build wealth long term. How would you like to own hundreds of swanky modern office buildings, luxe hotels, and real estate all around the country without needing millions of dollars in capital? You want to make money? Buy some real estate! Now we've talked a lot about stock market investments in this video, but every great investor knows that a well diversified portfolio goes beyond just the stock market. In order to truly reduce risk and maximize your returns, you have to start investing in assets outside of the stock market, such as real estate. And no, I'm not talking about putting down $30,000 to buy a physical piece of real estate. I'm talking about investing in REITs or real estate investment trusts. REITs are companies that own and manage income producing real estate. And so when you buy shares of a REIT, you are instantly adding real estate to your portfolio just like magic. One of the best alternative investment ETFs that you can hold in your portfolio is VNQ or the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. VNQ's goal is to try and replicate the returns of the MSCI US Investable Market Real Estate 2550 Index, an index designed to capture the returns of REITs in the real estate sector of the stock market. And so VNQ doesn't actually invest in real estate, it invests in REITs and then those REITs are actually the ones that are investing in real estate. And so by investing in this real estate ETF, ETF, you are immediately adding over 171 different REITs to your portfolio, including popular REITs like American Tower Corp, Public Storage, and many others. Now, REITs are actually a lot like dividend paying stocks, where the goal of the stock is not necessarily to grow the fastest. The primary goal of the stock is to pay dividends to investors consistently, right? And a REIT is the exact same way. For example, over the past 10 years, VNQ has an average return of about 7.48% annually. But as I said, the focus is not 
not growth. If you would have invested $10,000 10 years ago into VNQ, your investment would have grown to about $20,548. That's honestly not that bad, but where this ETF really shines is its dividend. VNQ has a dividend yield of 3.1% and over the past year has paid $2.86 per share in dividends. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into VNQ one year ago, you would have been paid about $309 in dividends. I think this is going to be very important to add that the dividend payments that most REITs pay to investors are taxed as ordinary income. You see, dividends are usually taxed in one of two categories, as qualified dividends or as ordinary dividends, also known as non-qualified dividends. Qualified dividends are taxed as long-term capital gains, meaning that depending on which of these income brackets that you fall under, you'll have to pay between 0 and 20% in taxes on your dividend income. And that may still sound like a lot, but consider this. If your dividends were taxed as ordinary income, depending on your income bracket, you would have to pay nearly double taxes on your dividends compared to if your dividends were taxed as qualified dividends. And so with that in mind, the dividends that most REITs pay are taxed as ordinary income. Now, VNQ does have the highest expense ratio on this list. With an expense ratio of 0.12%, this means you'll pay $12 for every $10,000 that you invest into VNQ. If you can't afford to invest in physical real estate, that does not mean that you're out of options. Investing in a real estate ETF such as VNQ will still give you adequate exposure to the real estate market with the flexibility and liquidity offered by stock market investments because REITs are traded on the stock market. Now, in addition to real estate, what other alternative investments can you include in your portfolio to help mitigate your portfolio's volatility and risk in the stock market? Now, I know this is probably going to surprise a lot of you guys, but just hear me out, okay? fine art. Investors and finance professionals are recognizing the potential of fine art more than ever, with 85% of wealth managers recommending art as part of a wealth offering, according to Deloitte. But why exactly is fine art so exciting as an investment? Well, it can hedge against inflation, deliver some incredible returns, and yes, diversify your portfolio to help fight against volatility. When it comes to hedging against inflation, art is a physical asset with a set value tied to it, and so it won't fluctuate as much based on internal factors. In fact, art becomes more desirable during times like these with inflation over 3%, with stronger price appreciation than gold and the S&P 500 at a whopping 23%. And when it comes to returns, not only do some paintings have price appreciation in the thousands of percent, but a recent Forbes article showed that an art collection has the potential to rival the long-term returns of bonds. And the most important part is reducing volatility. A recent New York Times interview said it best. When stock markets take a nosedive, people look to invest in art. It's more tangible, the art market is bulletproof. This is because it shows the lowest correlation to stocks compared to every other major asset class, which helps to explain why the art market doesn't dip whenever stocks do. Now, if you heard all of that and you're excited to invest in art like I am, then you should check out Masterworks. It's the only platform that I trust for investing in art because their paintings are actually registered by the SEC and they have a team of registered account advisors standing by to answer any questions. They buy high value art from the likes of Picasso and Banksy and break it into smaller shares. This means you don't need millions of dollars for the full painting to still get art into your portfolio. If you wanna check them out, there's usually a wait list, but my viewers get priority access to skip the waitlist by going to masterworks.art slash Joshua Mayo or by clicking the link in the description below. Grab your passports and let's fly overseas to take a look at some investment opportunities beyond just the United States. You may not be familiar with names of companies outside of America, which might make you feel like the stocks that they issue are risky, but that's not necessarily true. Now, although I don't believe that international stocks should act as a core holding in your portfolio, markets outside of the US do tend to have a low correlation with US markets. And so if you're investing in stocks outside of the US, you're kind of helping to spread out the risk in your portfolio compared to if you were just investing in US stocks. Plus, data shows that the US markets don't always outperform international markets. And it's impossible to know when international will outperform US and vice versa. And so it's best just to hold both. With that, I believe one of the best international ETFs that you can hold in your portfolio is VXUS or the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF. This ETF seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap X US Index, which measures investment returns of stocks located outside of the United States. A very popular combination amongst investors is to combine VTI with VXUS. You see, VTI only invests in American companies, and so if you're wanting to add international exposure to your portfolio, then you can do that by adding VXUS in addition to VTI. It's worth mentioning that Vanguard actually has an ETF that invests in both international and US markets. It's called VT, or the Vanguard Total stock market ETF. But the problem with this ETF is that you don't have any control over how much of your portfolio you want to invest in US stocks 
versus international. You see, because by default, VT invests about 60% in US stocks and 40% in international. But you may not necessarily agree with this allocation. Perhaps you want to have a smaller percentage of your portfolio being held in international stocks, like 30 or 20%. And this is why I personally recommend the combination of VTI with VXUS over VT, because VTI plus VXS gives you more control over how much international exposure you want in your portfolio. Now, I'm certainly not going to say that it's a requirement to have international stocks in your portfolio. This is purely personal preference. I mean, even people like Jack Bogle, Vanguard's founder, didn't invest in international stocks. Same with Warren Buffett. But you can't just not invest in international just because they didn't. You have to do your own research on why you do or don't want international exposure in your portfolio. Now, VSS holds a total of 7,871 international stocks with top holdings in names like Taiwan Semiconductor, Nestle, Tencent, Samsung, and many other international companies. Over the last 10 years, VSS has returned 5.2% annually, meaning $10,000 invested 10 years ago would be worth around $16,578. But remember, the purpose of this ETF is to add international exposure to your portfolio, okay? And just because international is not performing well right now does not mean that it's always gonna be that way. At any point, the tables can turn and international stocks can start outperforming US stocks. And when it comes to dividends, VSS actually has an impressive dividend yield of 3.86% and paid about $1.99 per share in dividends over the past year. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into VSS one year ago, you would have been paid about $309 in dividends. And the expense ratio comes in slightly higher with this one, but not too expensive. At 0.07%, this means you'll only have to pay $7 per year for every $10,000 that you invest into this ETF. But guys, I can't stress this enough, okay? Make sure that you do your own research when deciding if you want to include international stocks in your portfolio or not. But for most investors, it's probably safe just to keep them in your portfolio because nobody can tell the future. And if you can tell the future, then please give me a call. Dividend ETFs can be a great addition to your portfolio of non-dividend focused stocks. Dividends provide a steadier stream of income that can help accelerate the magical effects of compound interest, something that Albert Einstein himself called the eighth wonder of the world. And one of the greatest dividend ETFs that you can invest in, in my opinion, is SCHD or the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. The main goal of this ETF is to track the total return of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, an index specifically designed to measure performance of high dividend yielding stocks in the US that have a record of consistently paying high dividends. Dividend ETFs like SCHD are so easy to love because not only do they provide dividends, but they also experience growth and they provide downside protection during bear markets. For instance, take a look at this chart. So far this year, every major index is down over 15% or more. But if you look at SCHD, a different story emerges. SCHD is only down 10% compared to the broad market. Now, a loss is still a loss. I get it, okay? But SCHD is still down a lot less than everything else. And that's kind of got to count for something, right? SCHD currently holds 104 dividend paying stocks with top holdings in Merck & Co., PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, IBM, and many other high dividend paying companies. And over the last 10 years, SCHD has returned 13.33%, which means if you would have invested $10,000 10 years ago, your original investment would have grown to about $34,134, which is really great for a dividend focused ETF. Now, being that SCHD is a dividend ETF, it does provide better dividends compared to other ETFs on this list. With an annual dividend of 2.83%, over the past year, SCHD has paid out $2.23 per share in dividends. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into this ETF one year ago, you would have been paid about $310 in dividends. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Joshua, that seems kind of low. I mean, the first ETF on this list, VTI, which is not even technically considered a dividend ETF, still paid a dividend of $3.04. What's the deal with that? Well, something that you have to take into consideration is the share price. For example, VTI is currently trading close to $200 per share. And so in order to earn $3.04, you need to invest $200. On the contrary, SCHD pays $2.23 in dividends per share, which does seem lower, right? But each share only costs $72, nearly three times cheaper than one share of VTI. And so with that same logic, if you invested $200 into VTI, you'd earn $3.04 in dividends. However, if you invested that same $200 into SCHD, it would buy you nearly three shares of the stock. And so you'd earn about $6 
$2.69 in dividends, which is over double the dividends of VTI with the same $200. Now that is a juicy dividend right there. And to make the deal even juicier, SCHD's expense ratio isn't even that high. With an expense ratio of 0.06%, you'll only have to pay $6 per year for every $10,000 that you invest into this ETF. Now there is a very strong argument that this ETF could potentially act as a core holding in your portfolio alongside other ETFs like VTI and VXUS. But SCHD's strong portfolio of stocks, consistent growth, consistent dividends, and downside protection during bear markets are all reasons to consider putting money to work inside of this ETF. Now, a portfolio that invests in the broad market is proven to be more successful long-term. However, that doesn't mean that other strategies like investing in growth stocks are completely out of the picture. Growth stocks can still be a very important part of your portfolio because popular growth stocks like Apple, Google, and Tesla can deliver above average returns, helping to boost your portfolio's overall returns beyond just the broad market returns. For that reason, I'd like to talk with you about what I believe to be the best growth stock ETF that you can include in your portfolio, and that's VGT or the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. The goal of this ETF is to track the performance of the MSCI US Investable Market Information Technology Index, a stock market index made up of companies in the information technology sector. Now, although at the time of this recording, we are in a bear market and technology stocks are getting hammered right now, it doesn't mean that the technology sector will never recover. Whether it's some version of Web 3.0 that we don't know about yet, or just a continuation of what's already been happening over the past two decades, technology will continue shaping and defining the world that we live in. And so technology is not going anywhere. And so technology ETFs like VGT will always play an important part in our portfolios. Okay, so what exactly is inside of VGT? The ETF holds 394 stocks in total with top holdings in the world's largest tech companies, including Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and many others. Over the past 10 years, VGT has given an annual average return of about 18.24%. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into this ETF, after 10 years, your $10,000 investment would have grown to about $58,886. Now, VGT is considered to be an aggressive growth ETF, but with that being said, it does still pay dividends. VGT has a dividend yield of 0.87% and has paid a $2.98 dividend per share over the past year. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into VGT one year ago, you would have been paid about $87 in dividends. Now, the expense ratio for this one is a little bit higher at 0.10%. You'll have to pay $10 per year for every $10,000 that you invest into this ETF. Now, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. This ETF is not gonna be for everybody. Plus, many people argue that tech stocks are far overvalued and due for a pullback and a couple of years of sideways price consolidation. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But if you think that technology is the future and you want to aggressively invest your money into technology, then an ETF like VGT is the perfect place to put your money to work. Fixed income ETFs or just bond ETFs can provide a lot of benefits to your portfolio, especially during times of really high market volatility. But because broad bond market ETFs can have low correlation to the stock market, it can help to reduce your portfolio's volatility, which is an ideal situation for anybody approaching retirement. With that being said, I'd like to talk with you about what I believe to be the best bond ETF that your money can buy, and that's BND or the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. BND's main goal is to track the Bloomberg US Aggregate Float Adjusted Index, which provides broad exposure to the investment grade bond market. Now, it's important to specify the ETF's focus on investment grade bonds, okay? Because this ETF is not investing in junk bonds, for example. A junk bond is a type of bond that is considered very risky because it has a high default risk, meaning that if you invest your money into the bond and the company defaults on the bond, you aren't getting your money back. Junk bonds have a credit rating of BB, BA, or lower. In contrast, investment grade bonds are considered less risky because they have a low risk of defaulting. These bonds typically have a triple B rating or higher. BND currently holds about 10,173 bonds inside of one single ETF, giving your portfolio ultimate exposure to bonds. With that being said, of the over 10,000 bonds that this ETF holds, about 66% of the bonds are government bonds. And then going down the list, you can see that only 1.10% are less than triple B, which is good. However, depending on your risk tolerance and time until retirement, a diversified portfolio that includes bond ETFs can help to reduce your portfolio's volatility, which can help during turbulent times. A 
And of course, because BND holds bonds, bonds pay interest, and that interest is paid out to you, the investor, in the form of distributions. BND has a dividend yield of 2.2% and has paid about $1.79 in interest over the past year. This means if you would have invested $10,000 into BND a year ago, you would have earned roughly $238. And finally, the expense ratio for BND is very low. At only 0.03%, you'll only have to pay $3 per year for every $10,000 that you invest into this ETF. And that right there, my friends, are the only six ETFs that you'll ever need to invest in. Hey, if you wanna learn more about how to invest in ETFs, then I would highly recommend that you watch this video here next. You guys are amazing, I mean, just incredible. And as always, I will see you again very soon. Take care.